why being financially free beats being debt free all day long. That's today's episode. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. And this is the Investing in Real Estate Show. This is the show where we help you build financial freedom, live the life that you want, uh, enjoy your afternoons, and hang out with your kids, hang out with your wife, like this one. Um, she's my wife. And we talk real <laughs> estate on this show, but we and we use real estate, that's the means that we've achieved financial freedom. Other people can do it with performing assets like gold or you know, hey, even warehouses, right? Or uh, mobile home parks or God knows what else. Right, yeah, notes, notes or, yeah. Um, I don't know, small businesses. Yeah, there are a lot of ways to think of performing assets. Exactly right. So we talk about financial freedom. In fact, we have our freedom cheat sheet that we just re recently revised. It's totally free. If you come to our website, morrisinvest.com slash freedom, you can download it for free and it kind of walks you through step-by-step -step how to live financially free. And you can see our... <laughs> You dropping just stuff. My pen. Um, <laughs> I was furiously taking notes. She got so excited notes. about financial freedom. She dropped her pen. So yeah, come on over to our website. It's our last name, morrisinvest.com slash freedom. Download it. But today we wanted to talk about like the financial freedom piece. That's the goal. But a lot of people love, you know, the Dave Ramseys of the world love to talk about just getting out of debt yeah. as freedom. But that's not freedom. Not necessarily. Do you remember in high school when everyone would um, agree to drop their pen at a certain time yeah. on the substitute teacher? I feel like I just did that. I pranked you that with a good prank. high school prank. <laughs> right. Okay. So, you know, I do want to talk about debt today. This has been top of mind because I had been reading a few real estate books and specifically around protecting your castle, right? Because um, the word loophole comes from the crenellations of a castle where you would sort of sneak through and be able to shoot an arrow at anyone advancing. It's, yeah, it's the top of the castle that has, looks like, uh, where you can like boxes. peek through, right? Yeah. And so that's where the word loophole even comes from. Did you actually? Know that? That's an arrow. Uh, the arrow loop is the hole on the side of the castle where you shoot the arrows. Right. Remember? Yeah, that's where. Um, okay, maybe it's not necessarily the crenellation part, but there are like holes holes in the castle where you protect yourself. So loophole has kind of a like a negative connotation in our language, but really it just comes from the idea of how you protect yourself, right? You like put a hole in your estate so that you can make sure that you are ready to Fire warn off any attackers. Any so, Vikings about to attack. Uh, any Vikings at any time could be attacking your 401k. Right. So because I've been reading that, I have sort of been reevaluating the way I think of debt. Now we're always kind of like, oh, we should just pay off all our mortgages, right? We should pay off this debt or that debt. But when you think of debt, you can also think of it as a protection. Because if someone were to sue me for the value of my estate, right? And let's say I live in a home that's worth $200,000, but I owe $150,000. Well, that means that I have gone into a government agency and signed for the fact that my mortgagor is going to have first position on this debt. Right. The lien holder is the is Bank of America or whatever. Right. They have the first they have the first position and not some guy who's suing you. Right. right. So if I have a mortgage for over eighty percent the value of my home, well then no one can sue me for more than twenty percent. So debt can be asset protection. Um, and I had not really thought of that in that way before. So that was one way in which I thought, well, debt can be pretty great, right? Now, it doesn't really work that way with like a student loan or a car payment, right? If someone's going after you for a certain amount of money and you have the cash, you're sort of car lender, Nissan, is not going to say, well, we get this money first, right? right? It doesn't work that way. And so debt on your assets, obviously, like your real estate investments, is much more protected than, say, your credit card debt. Because Visa is not going to get in line for that kind of thing. Right. So if you're able to buy you know, a package of properties or you're able to buy a $500,000 building and you're paying you know, 5% interest to the bank, but you're making 12% or 10% return or even 9% return or 7% return, there's still a differential between what you're paying the bank and what you're making. But that debt is also a protection. Is an asset protection. Right, exactly right. So, you know, we've been accelerating payoff on several of our liabilities, um, but this gave me a little, like I tapped the brakes a little because I thought, well, okay, I could think of this debt as asset protection also 
the interest on this debt, because it's interest inside of entities like an LLC, is a write-off. So that's obviously a, a tax deduction, and that's a benefit. But also, you know, I don't want to fixate on paying down low interest debt when I can use that money to make higher returns. So this is the teeter-totter we're right. always talking about. Like you put your two options on two sides of a teeter-totter and see which one you make more money or pay more money for, right? Right. And so again, it's allowing your tenants to pay your debts, right? So buying an asset, a performing asset with the money from someone else enables you not only the asset protection but then you have this you have this personal um you have this asset that's now added to your net worth your tenants are paying the rent which is paying down that debt but you're protected because you own like because you know not only or do you have it in a business entity but you also have it uh, owned or the debt is in first position with a, a mortgage note holder. right the the equity there is spoken for so let's just talk right? about your primary residence because many of you watching probably have a primary residence and so to natalie's point like if you had a two hundred thousand dollar house you owe 150 on it to a bank you have it in your own name you could only be sued for a portion of it and and nobody who's suing any it would just they're not going to do it bottom line because they know they're never going to get access to that because there's like Bank of America has a bigger position than coming after you. So then there's additional ways to protect yourself as well with that house, right? By putting it into a trust, taking it outside of the government's ability to get their hands on it. So putting it into like a dynasty trust, making sure that you're protected right. even at a higher level. Yeah, that, that's definitely outside the purview of this podcast. We should do a whole episode should... on trusts and dynasty trusts. Oh, and protecting your primary home even. Right, yeah, right, that right. might be a good one to see if Andrew would get on the phone for. Um, Andrew Howell is our lawyer. And so we're not giving you any advice about how to own your primary home, but we want you to sort of change your mindset about debt. Now, also a lot of times someone will say, well, I've got this 4% interest on a car loan. Should I just get rid of that before I start investing? Well, that depends on where you're going to start investing, right? If you're going to start investing in the stock market and making 4% on a good day, then maybe that money is better spent not paying 4% to the car company, mm -hmm. right? But if you know you can do better than 4%, which most real, invest, real estate investors in New Jersey are aiming for around 11%, and this is a really expensive place. So elsewhere where you're not living in an expensive market, people are aiming for between 10 and 15%. So if you can secure an investment for let's say 10%, but your car loan is 5%, well duh, keep the money in the, don't take that chunk of money and pay off the car, take that chunk of money, put it in 10% and you've created 5%. Right, exactly. Right, I recently had a question from a listener who uh, I think was a pharmacist and had $150,000 in pharmacy debt from you know student loans, wanted to know whether or not they should be paying off that pharmacy debt or investing. And that goes to the same thing that Natalie just said, which is, well, it matters. It you know your the interest point matters. Like, mm -hmm. are you going to take one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and just plunk it down on this debt, or are you going to work as a pharmacist and then make great money and then also be able to buy performing assets and allow your tenants to pay down your pharmacy debt? Right. Right. And then yeah. you're increasing your net worth. You're creating a tax shelter. You're that's financial intelligence right there. Right. Because think of that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Do you just put it in that debt and then it's gone, right? So you've you have nothing saved to show for it. 5%, but, or do you take it and put it in a 10% return and then you continue to pay that 5% to the lender, but you've created 5% in between that's yours. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, like, good rule of thumb. People ask me all the time, like, what's a good return? Well, it's like, you know, the stuff we buy is between like seven and a half, eight percent on the, you know, up to about 12%, you know, some of our like our C class stuff, but we, you know, we aim in that sort of B class range. You're looking at between like seven and 12% return. And then if you have got a debt of 4%, use that additional three and 4% to just pay it back. And you don't have to be involved in it. Let your tenants pay your pharmacy bill. Yeah, you know? exactly right. So that's how to live financially free. That's how to have financial intelligence, right? That's what we try to teach you here on the right. show. Right, yeah. And it's just sort of a more feel-good way to think about your debt because we... We have so many, again, negative connotations with not only the word loopholes, but debt as right. well. And debt is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, 
you know, we're making no judgments on what you spent that debt on in the first place. So um, whatever your values are, hopefully you're using it wisely, right? Right. And Don't bring a, up the boat again. He always says not to buy a boat. No, no. I was going to say, you okay. know, <laughs> something that I was thinking about the, the pharmacy job, right? Like yeah. it's a smart, like that $150,000 is likely going to provide a good salary for this individual for many years to come. So as long as the debt makes sense, right? Going into debt, to be, I don't know, an, an artist, and then you're not going to make any money. Like you got to really think about the returns, right? What is the return? It's a limiting belief as well, I'm sure. Okay, but yeah, are you going to be a Picasso? I'm just saying we're not going to make judgments on people's. Like, this is so hard for Clayton. No, because it's really important to think about. You're getting ready to go to college. Do you, you want three hundred thousand dollars in debt, but then you're only going to make forty grand a year for the rest of it? Like, does the, the ROI doesn't okay, make sense? Okay, I understand what you're saying, right? Yeah, but I mean, don't discourage anyone from artistic expression. I'm not. This, I'm just saying, don't waste. This podcast is my artistic you, expression. Right. You can go out and become an artist. <laughs> you don't have to pay three hundred thousand dollars to learn from somebody how to do it. Uh, anyway, that's, you don't know that. Why are you saying this? Do you have, about people's lifestyles. I, I'm not. I'm just saying. Be be. I think. I think about the debt that I got from college. Like if I had to re- go back and think about, is the ROI there? Right. I mean, it's not. I and mean, we were talking about return on investment on this show. We talk about financial literacy. And okay. If, like, why would you spend four hundred, three hundred thousand dollars? But for someone, that experience may be invaluable. Yes. Like, if you're okay. a doc, like if you're going to become a surgeon and you know that you're going to make five hundred thousand dollars a year. That makes sense, right? Then the return on that investment makes sense. But you don't know what something will make of you before you get into it ever. So I don't want to discourage people's right. experiences or put. I, I fight for your right to go to art school, okay. dear listener. And if you, it doesn't pay back, well, then maybe you had some other enriching experience. Like I Are just you want put- you to think about it in a more practical sort of freeing way about this specific type of debt, right? She's so, yeah, she's, I love that. High in the sky, yeah. Why are you saying this? We have a lot of Picassos watching right now. I'm just saying, I'm, all right, fine. I get it. I get what you're saying. I'm just saying, think about it. When You know, I'm going to have this discussion with our kids before they go off to college. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yeah. So, you know. Right, I'm not paying for them to go something to something they haven't thought through. Right. But... I'm just saying we may have some listeners who might have some beautifully creative experiences that we don't know what they're going to get okay, out of. And great. I don't want to discourage you from... Why? The, this is a tangent. Yes, this is a Very financial so. intelligence show. That's what we're talking about here. Okay. I'm not talking about people's dream, dreams and hopes around art <laughs> like and crayons. Like a marriage council. Right. All a right. marriage council would say, you're in the loop, so <laughs> let's not get out. That is going to do it for today's episode of it will. the Investing in Real Estate podcast. Thank you so much for sitting in on our marital discussions today on uh, whether or not your kids should go to art school. Go out there <laughs> Live, live financially free and have financial intelligence. How about that? All right? And become a real estate investor. It's field of dreams here. And go out there, become an artist. Spend $300,000. Carpe get a, diem, everybody. Get an art degree. We'll see you next time. Bye.